I grew up in a household where I just wanted to like get out of my house as quickly as possible. So I moved to Chicago when I was 19. Um, I was going to school. I'd been shooting skate videos since I was a teenager. And I just sort of never stopped shooting skate videos. And I sort of never stopped, I guess, living that lifestyle of just like traveling around, skating during the summers, or my time off or whatever. I was just road tripping as much as possible. I looked up to Spike Jones when I was growing up when I was a teenager, you know. He was really pushing the boundaries of skate videos. So I was like, I kind of want to try something new. I want to like interview skateboarders about their feelings, their families, um, how they, you know, navigate relationships, you know, are, are they lonely? At one time I was uh, at a skate park in St. Louis and we were like sitting around in a circle and after skating and we were just like talking, hanging out. And then one person brought up the fact that it was Father's Day and, you know, we we're like all here on Father's Day, like what's the deal? And then everybody just started talking shit about their dads <laughs> or their lack of fathers, you know. I think that was the first, I guess, like aha moment. Hi, my name is Bing Liu, and I'm the director of Mind in the Gap, which is premiering in the U.S. Documentary Competition at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival. Uh, the first person that I started really uh, latching on to and knowing, like, oh, this person is it. At the time, he was uh, the 16-year-old kid named Kier. Went and interviewed him by this, like, dam with, like, graffiti in the background. It was like, you know, he, like, really opened up about everything. He, like, channels emotions so much. He's so, like, transparent with his emotions. And then went and like filmed him skating, and then we went up to his attic, and I did the second interview that got a little deeper. And uh, we had this moment that is in the film, actually, um, where we just both relate on this one specific topic about how our fathers treated us. And then uh, while I was filming here, I like found out that this, uh, I guess, de facto leader of the skateboarding community is this guy named Zach, Zach Mulligan. Um, he's a little bit older, everyone sort of looks up to him. He's also very charismatic in a different way, but I found out that he was about to become a father. So I was like, okay, this is a trackable journey that I can start filming now. It starts out, you're thinking there's two characters, but then a third one sort of gets introduced, and the fourth one sort of becomes stronger by the end. It's not a personal film in the traditional sense, but you know, I do sort of play a hand in the story. These are my friends uh, because we're skateboarders and skateboarding is sometimes a very insular community that has this instant bond sort of like maybe musicians who travel around the country in vans or whatever it's like oh you play music and like travel and sleep on couches like I do that too you know it's like as skateboarders it's like you know oh we just understand each other in this level where you know we don't even have to get to know each other more difficult in my film is like because they are my friends and part of uh, the same community that I'm in um, when these things start popping up when I start learning more about things that you know, are a little bit challenging to hear. It's like, what do I do as a filmmaker? What do you do when you, you know, learn that your friend is um, doing something that is questionable? Or what do you do when your friend is, you know, feeling something that um, you really don't, you really want to help them with, and you're making a film about them at the same time, and you're struggling with things that, you know, from your past. So it was like this big, like, uh, Tasmanian devil of, of like therapy and, and emotions and, um, these ethical questions that would pop up all the time that, you know, I'd go to sleep thinking about. <laughs>